Right, it's an early start this morning and I've brought you to the fantastic Ferry Meadows, perhaps the most famous bream water in the UK and a venue that to me holds some really special memories. I've been coming here the best part of 30 years, right back from club matches where like, as a kid, if I caught three bream here, it was like the best day ever. Now, however, the fishing's, it's a lot better, basically. There's a lot more fish to be caught. And today, I'm on Overton. Two lakes, Gunwade and Overton. I'm on Overton. I've set myself a little challenge, and the challenge is to catch 10 bream. Now, that might seem like a lot, but I'm quite ambitious, I'm quite confident. We might be resetting that challenge halfway through, but I think 10 bream is realistic today. And it's the little tips and tricks about how I'm gonna catch them. That's gonna be the key thing today. So hopefully, you're gonna learn plenty along the way. A massive part of bream fishing on big waters like Ferry Meadows is the initial baiting up. Now, I'm sort of the old school in, as in you can put it in, but you can't take it out. So unless I know I'm really in for a good day, maybe they're rolling or I know they're in an area, then I'll always err a little bit on the side of caution when it comes to the initial baiting. Today, I know there has been some bream in this area. Conditions aren't great, but I'm still pretty confident we're gonna catch a few. So I've kicked the swim off with 10 large 30 gram Guru bait up feeders in that, I've got a pint and a half of neat ground bait, ringers original, ringers dark. It looks quite a dark mix, but the water's very clear and it's still quite visual. So I've got a pint and a half of neat ground bait, mixed slightly on the wet side, so it's, it's gonna go down nice, but still cloud. And then to that, I've added half a pint of pellets, a mixture of two mil and four mil uh, F1 sweet. The reason I like those pellets is purely the fact they're yellow. I'm not so fussed about the flavour person. I like the fact the yellow, the water's clear. There's something visual on the bottom for the bream to feed on. I think bream feed a lot on visibility and those yellow pellets just give me a little bit of an edge with the F1 sweet. On top of that, I've added literally, I've got a pint tub and just covered the bottom with sweet corn. Again, bright yellow, bream can visualise it, see it and home in on it. Also to that, because dead maggots are probably going to be my main hook bait today. I've equally added the same with dead maggots, just covered the bottom of the one pint tub, added them to the mix and just mixed the whole lot in. So it's like lots of particles in the mix. The actual feed in itself, I've mixed it up a little bit. The water's gin clear and I mean gin clear. And when water's really clear and you bream fish in, I think visibility is so important. And for that reason, I've put the 10 in, but I've put seven in on the surface and three on the bottom. For those that aren't quite sure what I mean, when I say seven in on the surface, I mean, as that feeder hits the water, I've literally pulled it like three, four times, emptied it on the surface. So the bait's falling down, nice cloud. I think you get a better spread. It's almost like spodding. If you're a carp angler, using the spod that empties on the surface. So I've put seven in on the surface, nice cloud and a better spread of bait. Then I've put three in on the bottom for the bream really to feed on. The, my theory being, water's crystal clear, it's pretty calm. Those bream are going to be milling about in mid-water. They're going to see that cloud and then follow the bait down. Right, we've had a few indications. We're probably we're just over an hour in. And I've had indications, probably like seven or eight indications. Like, so I've known it's not devoid, but I've not been able to get one. I've tried a couple of different things, putting one in on the surface, then chucking over the top and waiting. I've tried a little tiny window. And I've just gone back to what I started on. I had an indication again last chuck, and then it's gone round this chuck on three and a half minutes. I was just starting to get a little bit worried the, the thing that's kept me sort of going is the fact that i've had indications it's like there's nothing worse when bream fishing when you cannot get a sign at all but like i've had virtually an indication every single chuck from the start it's just so bright so flat 
and the water's absolutely crystal clear that it just starts to worry you they're not going to feed. And then literally this one's just picked it up. I can't really say out the blue. Oh, he's just stuck on. He's just coming, is he? Yeah. It's a bit of a, like a ledge of weed there. It's not actually a big fish by fairy standards, but it'll get me off the mark and one fish closer to 10. 10% 10 of the way, as they say. I always think once you get one as well, you just feel so much better. Like I say, it's quite a small one by. But you can see how clear that water is. I do think that's why I'm getting a few indications. And I do think when they settle, I'll hopefully get a nice runner fish. It's almost a... If we caught that in a match, I'd actually say it was a skimmer, but most places it would be a bream. Amazingly, that's three and three now. Not doing anything different. Bike time is, for all three has been exactly the same between three and five minutes. Just sticking on that. They definitely get a little bit stuck there. There must be a big bank of weed. But with that running pattern oster, I just feel they, because it's not a fixed rig, the feeder moves in the weed and they just come through. This one's just got a little, I can just feel it getting stuck now. It's just it's still moving though. The weird thing is it's not actually, yeah, it's coming, here it comes. Got it moving. Well, it's a little bit bigger. It's not as big as that last one though, I don't think. But it's definitely not a bad one. Like I said, I've not done anything different. I made a few changes early on but when I was getting indications, but now I'm actually getting no indications which is often the best way at ferry, no indications and you get just proper bites. It's like when you're getting indications, it's cause nice fish. The fish aren't actually settled in the swim. You know what I mean? It's important, get the indications. Don't strike them either because that can unsettle them even more. I sort of had five pound plus, definitely. Right, I'm going to run you through my kit choice for big water breaming. First of all, I'm fishing 52 metres today, which isn't a massive chuck, but if conditions do get up, which can on big waters, then I've got to be able to get there comfortably. So rod choice is a 12 foot engaged power feeder. Tip wise, because I know a lot of people like to know what quiver tips I'm using, etc. Ounce and a half quiver. If there was a big wind on, I might step that up to two ounce just to take into account the toe. Real choice TDR distance, which is like a mini big pit, plenty of cranking power. I could be fishing big feeders. I've not needed to today, purely on the basis it's been bright and pretty flat. On the reel, I've got 010 Pulse 8 braid. Braid is really, really important for bream fishing. It aids accuracy in, in terms of casting, but also bite detection too. So braid for me is a must. Then I've got a shot leader. I'm not fishing braid direct. I've got a shot leader of 12 pound shield. That takes the force of the cast. So when I'm casting, I'm casting off the 12 pound shield and then going onto the braid. Uh, lengthwise, just as a guideline, when I'm in the casting position, I like four to six turns of the leader on the reel. Moving down, nice simple setup. It's what I call a running pattern oster. If I just put the rod down. I thread it on a two inch feeder link, like so. Then a small guru line stop, and then a four inch twizzled loop in the shield. That acts as sort of a boom and helps to prevent tangles. In the four inch loop, 
I've just tied a small loop, probably half an inch long in the end. That's where my hook length attaches via the sort of loop to loop connection. And I've got 50 centimetres 016 pure fluorocarbon. I'm a massive fan of fluorocarbon when the water's clear and you might con sort of come into contact with like zebra mussels, rocks. Fluorocarbon's A, invisible in water, so it's less likely the fish can see it in the clear, clear water, and B, it's a little bit more abrasion resistant, so there's less chance of getting cut off. Last but not least is hook choice. It will come as a surprise to most watching this that I'm using a size 14 pole special. Yes, pole special. Now, what I love about this hook is its shape. I'm fishing dead maggots on the hook, two, three, or four dead maggots, alternating sort of reds and whites. But it's got an extra long point, and it's what I'd call a unique shape. And what this gives it, it prevents the maggots from going over the hook. There's nothing worse than being on a shoulder feeding bream, getting a bite, getting one turn on it, coming off, and finding the maggots doubled over the hook. Because the pole special's got such a long point, it doesn't happen. You just very rarely, if ever, get a maggot doubling over. And the other thing that's really important is, even in horrific terrain, say fishing over rocks, etc., they keep their points so well, and a sharp hook is a must when targeting big bream. Moving back up, just one little last add on, and that's feeder choice. I'm starting on a 35 gram, four old medium slim line. I could start on a bigger feeder, but it's so flat and so calm to that. I don't want to risk sort of spooking the fish. So smaller feeder still holds plenty of bait, and then I'll just vary it up as the session progresses. I might switch to a little tiny window, might switch to an X change, just a case of chopping and changing, depending on how the fish are having it on the day. There you go, number four, or is it? Is that a bream? I think it probably depends where you live. If you live up north where it's tough, that's a big bream, but for ferry meadows, it's a small one. Either way, I'm gonna count it. That's number four. Without doubt, the key to catching big amounts of bream is location. First of all, you've got to find them. Now, when it comes to looking for swims, points are always gonna be good put you a little bit further out. Any areas that you can find out that have got deeper water, closer to the bank or any sort of cover, bream love cover. So if we take ferry meadows as an example, the bream love, anywhere where there's weed, there's bream. Loads of food in the weed, so the bream hang around it. So if you can find a nice weed bed and then a clear spot by the side of it, you're always gonna catch bream. So distance wise, I always say make it comfortable. Depth is important. So like if you do not, if you can't find anything out about a venue, then have a plumb around when you get to your peg, see what you've got in front of you depth wise. Ferry's pretty flat, once you get to sort of 20 metres, you're looking at eight to 10 foot over most of it. So to me, there's no real need to go a million miles. The weed's close in here, so I want to be just past the weed. So you're looking at sort of 45, 50, 55 metres max. Go to where the bring live, don't make them come to you. Well, we just had a dead spell. When I say a dead spell, I've had three, I've done four quick fish. And I've just had three casts where I've had a couple of little indications, but it's not gone as though something's unsettled them. So I've just took off the 35 gram slim line and put the smallest window, the extra small window on. My thinking being less disturbance, let them settle again. Fishing that little tiny window, it's almost like chucking a bomb. I have put a little bit of ground bait in it, but it goes in with such a lovely little plop. I feel like it's the next best thing to chuck in a bomb over the top. And literally it's my quickest bite, which says it's worked as in less disturbance. I just think with it being so flat as it is now and the water so clear, the bream are just really easily spooked. That's why I had a couple of indications, no bite. And as I said, when I was getting my bites, I didn't have any indications. I've only had indications when I'm not catching. So just putting that little window on, it's not something I want to fish the rest of the day, I think it's a great way of just mugging a fish, and I feel like that's what I've done with this one. I, mean, I could have just carried on chucking the bigger feeder, and they might not have settled again. It's just gone a bit to the left. Here we come. Feels a half decent fish, actually. It's definitely pulling a bit. It's bigger than that last one. It's definitely a proper bream, size-wise. But it just shows small feeder as well can be big fish. And it's just got me stuck in that. It's just coming over the top again. Yeah, it's a decent, you can just see it turning in the clear water. That little window trick is something I use all the time, particularly on water that's either shallow or very clear. You, I know I've got enough bait down, so it's just a case. 
sometimes we're picking the fish off in a little feeder. I might have three chucks on it now. And then if I don't catch another fish, I'll just go back to the bigger feeder and reset the trap, so to speak. There we go, you can see the little window. That's a great fish, to be fair. Coming in that clear water, they look immense. Six, seven pounds of anyone's money. Probably bigger, actually, I reckon that's not far off eight. So there you go, that's number five. And if there was any doubt about number four, there's no doubt about that one, and I think that makes up for it. I reckon that's every ounce eight pound. Proper breeze block of a ferry bream. Let's slip him back and go for number six. Right, I nicked that one on the window straight away, but I've not nicked another. I've had two more chucks, and it, I emphasised at the time, it's important not to keep chucking the window, not this little tiny one, because I feel like I'm not doing anything to pull a fish into the swim. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unclip the window, and save it again for a bit later on, and go back to the medium slim line in 35 gram. But to try and make something happen, and try and just pull a fish, I'm just going to slop the ground bait up a bit. The idea being to sort of maximise the cloud. I'm going to, to try and restart the swim, I'm going to have like three two-minute chucks just to try and get a little bit of cloud. And then if it doesn't go in the three two-minuters, I'm going to like have a 10 minute just to let the swim cool down again, calm down, so to speak. So three quick two minutes with a sloppy ground bait just to get some cloud on that slightly bigger feeder. And then if it hasn't gone then, like a 10 minute or just to let the swim settle and hopefully regroup those fish. I, I did expect this to happen, as in get that little burst, but it's just a case now of restarting the swim and maybe getting two more bursts to get to that 10 fish target. That's the plan anyway. Well, I flew to five in that little run, and I, I caught, put them two quick chucks with a little sloppy slim line in, and, the, and on the long chuck I had one for number six. But since then, I haven't managed to make a bite. I've tried repeating the slop trick. Uh, that's produced nothing. I am getting odd, and I mean really odd signs. I know there's still fish out there. I've just, just having a quick chuck now on that extra small window with an 80 centimeter hook length just to see if, if that sort of mugs me one but I need four more we've got literally 90 minutes to go and I need four which you might think well he's only caught six but I feel like it's possible because it's one run of fish and I don't feel the pegs devoid so I'm going to take a gamble you know I mean I'm a believer as a match angler like in I know this isn't a match but trying to win and I feel the best way to win in this situation is going to be three more bait ups when I say the bait ups I mean the large bait ups quite wet ground bait, a few maggots, a bit of pellet and a little bit of corn, empty them on the surface, cloud it up, sort of restart it again. I just feel like the last hour can be really good. I'm not 100% certain how much bait's left on the bottom either. So I feel like by putting three in, it gives me the confidence I've got some bait there. And also I'm gonna put a bit more cloud in the water. Like I said, there's still fish in the area because I'm getting odd, tiny indications. So there is fish milling about. So I think three feeders, and then maybe just chuck the little tiny window over the top or be really patient with a slim line, one or the other. But I just feel that that might just give me that kickstart to get those four fish. So I'm going to reel this in and put some bait in.
right, we're 20 minutes after refeeding, and I've just chucked the little tiny window back over the top of those three feeders, and I've got one. Whether I'd have caught it anyway, we'll never know, but it's certain, putting those three in certainly hasn't done any harm. I'm on the longer hook length as well. My, my thinking being, water's crystal clear, they might not want to come too close to the feeder. So I'm on that little tiny window. I just feed it, filled it full of neat ground bait. It's really important to keep varying up what you put through. Now I've got my sort of confidence up that I'm fishing over those three feeders. I'm quite happy to chuck that little window with just neat ground bait in it and fish for a bite. And I've got one and I've literally now got an hour and 10 minutes, if I, providing this one doesn't fall off, to catch three more, which I'm pretty confident of doing so. I'm not saying it's going to be easy and it might go to the wire, but I think there's every chance. I just think today is a classic example of having to mix things up to keep bites coming. Maybe take an odd gamble as well. And also the fact is when the water's clear, chucking big feeders in all the times, it's not the one, particularly when it's as calm as it's been today. I almost feel like you could put a load of bait in and then just chuck like, the little tiny window all over it. Doesn't look a massive fish, but it's a bream. When you consider the conditions, not being funny, it's amazing that we're even catching. There we go. There's number seven. Not bad, and probably four and a half, five pound. A little bit of a old warrior type after spawning. go that's another proper one and that is number eight let's see if we can get the pop the hook out every one has been so well hooked hold them up so there you go number eight and a cracker They've definitely settled on that bait we've got 45 minutes to go the challenge is on And there's number nine. Definitely feel now they're starting to get their heads down. Had a little 20 minute quiet spell. Just put one in full of pellet, followed it in, and it's gone around within two minutes with this beauty. So number nine, one to go. Feels like a decent fish. Been out five minutes. And I'd say bite time has been like, I think I've had one long bite, but the bulk of the bites have been sort of three to six minutes. No real quick ones, but equally you haven't been able to bore any on. It's very rare in clear water that I think you bore fish on because they've got to follow the bait or see it to take it. So you almost still need to keep casting reasonably regular. By boring fish on, I mean sort of just chucking it out and saying, right, I'm leaving that for half hour. Problem is, I almost feel like the longer it's on the bottom, the less chance fish can find it. What you can do if you want a long chuck, and what I've been doing today, two quick chucks to, to get some cloud, get a bit of scent in the water, and then a long chuck. Here we go. And it's mission accomplished. <laughs> Cracking looking fish to finish as well. 
Bream number 10 in perhaps some of the worst bream conditions you could possibly get. Bright sunshine, flat calm, crystal clear water, but proof if you needed it that if you chop and change your feeders, slop up your ground bait and maybe take a late gamble, there's still bites to be had. A fantastic day's fishing at one of my favourite venues. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. <laughs>